Welcome back to the part two of the Mammoth Dunes round. Uh, I'm going to be playing the back nine. If you missed the first video, check the description. Uh, I shot a 39, which was actually my best round ever. So we'll see how it goes from here. Um, I'm going to play a little bit closer to my actual handicap here. And going to get some really cool holes on the back nine. And we're going to follow it up with the review. So let's just get right to it. Here's the golf. Alright, so hole 10 was probably actually my favorite on the property. Uh, it's an uphill, dog laid left, short par 3. Um, it just looks really cool when you get up there. I hit a sliced 5 wood, but I gave myself a pretty good uh, spot to miss at. Um, and now I have an uphill sand wedge with a bit of a bank on the left side, so I'm not trying to push my luck. I just want to hit the center of the green here, maybe left center. I actually struck it pretty good. Uh, not a very good wedge player, but this gave me a chance for a birdie here. So here's the birdie putt. It's relatively flat. Um, tough to read the break on these greens. I put it on a really good line, but I babied it. It was a little bit uphill. So starting off with a par, definitely take that. So after a stop to the drink cart, I get to the first of three par fives on the back. It's a par 37 on the back. Uh, tons of area to land, but oh, no. I kind of hit it off the toe. And I'm back into the sand on the fairway for the first time right. in a while. And I want to try something different here, so I'm thinking I can skid a five wood off the sand here and crank it over that bunker right in the foreground. But I slip, and I hit way behind the ball, and my plan did not work. Still have a chance to score in this hole though. Um, there's a little bit of danger creeping into the left side of the fairway, and if you hit it way far right, you're, you're pretty screwed, so I'm just gonna try to put it in the middle, middle of the fairway. And I hit a really low kind of sliced five wood, but it rolls up there forever. It's super firm. So kind of a tricky little shot here from 45 yards, little uphill on a downslope landing. I thought I clipped it pretty good. Not great direction, but the greens were fast. It rolled and rolled out to the fringe. Now I'm putting from here. I'm lucky it didn't go in the sand. And uh, my putting just kind of gets worse and worse as the round went on. Um, really babied that one. And now I have this for bogey. Which I miss. So, double. Not great. First seven on the scorecard. Another fairly easy hole with tons of room to land the ball. There's that one bunker right in the center that you don't really want to be in front. Um, either side of it would be good, but as you see, I kind of hit right next to it, and I get punished for that with uh, my view to the green. So this is a mounted bunker right in the center of the fairway, and I can't really see my target. Uh, I don't really know what happened here. I, I thought I struck it good. I must have got the wrong club, and uh, it hit the false front, rolled back down to the collection area. So I decided to go putter from here. It seemed like the safest option, and I don't know, I was kind of feeling confident at this point with the putter. Yep. Thankfully, I got it up with enough speed. Uh, all right. yeah, not bad and a kind of makeable par save here. I could have definitely missed long in that approach shot, but um, I don't know why I picked that club. Huge green. And I babied it again. I'm kind of getting scared of the green speed here. So this is my favorite bar three on Mammoth Dunes. Uh, it's just visually amazing. Uh, the video doesn't even do it justice. Um, it looks even cooler from the black tees. I wish I could have hit the shot from there. But um, I got 110 yards, which is always kind of the hardest club for me to pick between the gap and sand. And I always kind of get it wrong and short if I pick the uh, 54 degree. 
So I have a huge long putt here. You can see kind of how you're perched up on the ridge at this point. Really difficult putt. I thought I smashed it and it comes up a decent amount short. Now I got this for par. And I hammer that one, but it's close enough for a bogey. So I need to start scoring here, and what better time to do it on the signature hole, this downhill par four. I was in between clubs, and I ended up going driver for some reason. I really regret it, and I hit it off the toe again, and it landed into the waste area to the right. And now I have a side hill lie in the sand, and I got under it just totally... Took a bad swing. It was a really hard shot, though, and I'm frustrated here. I'm just trying to get it to roll down that hill, which I do, but I got too much of the sand again, and I come up short of the green. So I'm really scrambling here. This is for par. I decided to do a bump and run, but it lands on the down slope. It was way too much and rolls by all the way to the fringe, so... This is for bogey. A blow up hole is in the making if I don't get this close. And I get scared of the greens and hit it way too short. So I got a knee knocker for double bogey here. And I don't even give myself time to settle. I just get up there and hit it. and Just terrible. So... I got the first triple bogey on the card of the day. Now I'm starting to complain about tiredness and I had a three hour drive to get up here. Here's some ex the excuses. Um, long par five. I rip a, a really, really good drive. And everyone's making fun of me for complaining. So I dig deep and try to get focused and I have about 2.30 to the to the green, a um, little bit of a blind approach, actually totally blind, I, I just had to reference the uh, yardage book, and I thought I faded it right into the green, and um, it was stupid because there's still people on the green, so, man, that's too great. I apologized and I didn't, I didn't come close to hitting him, and I rolled to the left in the collection area anyways. Um, so yeah, I mean, once again, I'm going to use the putter from here. I think it was generally the right play. I don't really remember on the front nine it going too bad. This one is exceptionally difficult, though, because it's slanted and uphill quite a ways. But it ended up being a pretty good effort. So now I have a very makeable birdie putt here. Um, really would help my round after that triple bogey. It took a kind of weird putt there. Um, just rushed the back backstroke and yeah, botched it. So par, not bad. So this one is another blind yep. shot. It's a blind par three with a huge sand mounted in your face, but the green is massive. And I just tug it left with a little bit of a draw as well. And luckily I, I get onto the fringe. And there's nowhere to put the camera here. So um, you can't see the pin, but it's pretty far to the right. I have a huge long putt. And I take a pretty aggressive swing and I actually go by it decent ways. So... Got a really tough putt here for par. I'm not giving myself the easiest of time. I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, I can't expect to not three putt from there too often. So, bogey on this hole, really due to the tee shot. So now we're on to hole 17. Uh, I'm getting tired. I'm thinking about that post round beer. Um, but I wanna, you know, hit a good score. I think I have a chance to break 85 still. 
I kind of hit down on this one a little bit, so I didn't get the distance I wanted. A little bit of topspin, but I'm in the middle of the fairway with a six iron in my hand, which I don't think I've had to hit up until this point off of the, the fairway. Uh, I just wanted to kind of put it to the left of that first bunker, ah. but I, I totally top it, which is not the worst course to top a ball. Luckily, I don't go in this bunker. That would have been pretty rough, uh, so I still have a chance to save. A score on this hole, and I, I just totally got under that. I don't know what happened there. Uh, just a terrible shot. And for once, I don't putt. I think there's just a little too much turf, and I kind of pay for being cold in my chipping and smash it beyond the hole. You can see just how crazy massive these greens are. I just look tiny right here, and... That was a decent putt, good speed, and I just can put it in. So another double bogey, another high score. I'm ready to get get out of here. Hopefully I can put a par or birdie on and, and enjoy the beer. Sun was getting pretty low, so it looks really white here on my iPhone. Uh, I hit a final good drive. Thought it was going to roll into the waste area, but it's really far away, actually. Just kind of an optical illusion. Um, so one more good five wood and a wedge, and I'm home. I'm not going for it, just because I wasn't feeling very confident for good reason. Uh, another top shot, but it, it went totally flying. Um, so now I, I club up a little bit and try to take a smoother swing. And I did catch it fat, but luckily I clubbed up. I got right. into the green. So this is the biggest putting green uh, on the course. You can't really tell from this angle, but it, it is huge. So maybe that will change your mind if you're thinking about going for it. I had a really good putt here. I thought I was going in for a final birdie. It would have really put the icing on the cake in the round, but it stopped like a ball length short. So I parred the final hole. Finished with an 86, 47 on the back. Could have been better, but I like it. So that's it. I shot a 86 in total, which if you would have told me at the beginning of the day that's what I would shoot, I would have definitely taken that. But if you would have told me I shot a 39, followed up with a 47, I would have been a little bit more disappointed. Really started to fade there in the end, topping the ball. Yeah, you saw it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty proud of this score. I was a couple inches away from three birdie putts on the back it would have looked a little bit better but yeah I can't wait to try again and maybe I'll shoot even better here next time so moving on to the course review uh, these are the five categories that I always do uh, starting with fun factor fun factor I'm gonna give a nine um, the fairways are really easy to hit even if you don't hit them you're not gonna lose the ball most likely um, the conditions are firm and fast even after rain the night before um, so you can run up the ball to the greens there's usually not sand right in front of the green so to allow for that kind of shot uh, the areas around the green are very puttable um, the dune sand is beautiful but it's a little bit demoralizing to play out of when you can't get it out so I'm gonna dock one point for that I guess Conditions, I'm going to give a 10. Um, I have no complaints about what I saw out there. Um, even in late May, the course was playing as it should on a warm summer day, even with a little bit of dampness um, from earlier in the week. Um, I know it's a young course and there's a little bit of a kind of maturity needed in, in the grass, but that's not really the fault of the course and I didn't really notice anything except maybe getting under the, some shots that I that I sh thought I struck solidly, um, but other than that, I really can't complain. Design, I'm going to give an 8. Uh, that might raise a few eyebrows that I'm not giving it a 10, but I just felt that like a lot of the approach shots I was hitting, uh, like three quarters of them even, were just blind and I, I didn't really know where I was aiming. Um, I saw some of the most beautiful golf holes I've ever seen in my life out there, but it's hard to kind of appreciate, you know, the greens when you're only really looking at them when you're walking up to the hole. Um, and I just felt like that happened one too many times. 
Um, so it's maybe it's just the fact that I've only played it once and I and I hit it in the wrong spot on a lot of holes. But uh, after my first review, I'm gonna have to give it an eight. Value, I think it's an easy ten. We're talking about some of the top public golf courses in America here, and if you compare it to like places like Streamsong or Bandon, you're gonna get cheaper rates throughout the year. Uh, I paid about $160 for, for this rate, and the weather was absolutely perfect, conditions were absolutely perfect. Um, if you compare it to other golf courses like you know Pebble Beach or Whistling Straits, um, it's like several times cheaper. So I think for what you're getting, this is a very good value. Site, I'm going to give a 9. Uh, I think there are few courses in the country that have this kind of look and feel. It's very unique. Uh, I really like the way they use the ridge that was described in that fried egg video. Some of the coolest holes are near there. Um, but I mean, I can picture more dramatic land like Bandon and, and Scotland, for instance. I mean, there is something about the ocean that I have never ex personally experienced. but. I, I think I want to save the ceiling for something like that, for instance. So overall, I'm giving the course a 46 out of 50, and I'm calling it an unforgettable golf experience because I'm never going to forget getting that eagle. I'm never going to forget some of the holes on the course and shooting a 39. Um, but, I mean, the course itself was unforgettable, and I can't wait to go back. I can't wait to get revenge on 14. Uh, that just absolutely kicked my butt, picked the wrong club, I can't wait to play that. some of those par 3's again, uh, and I just can't wait to play golf there again. So yeah, uh, that's it, thanks for joining me everybody, and uh, look out for my next video which will be at Sand Valley Course, thank you.